I want to target my battery. Okay. Now, the new TI-84 calculators, if you get the color ones, I don't have one yet. They don't require batteries. They get plugged in. They have a charger built into them. So that would be very nice in having one of those. Yes, it is. Okay, TJ, how do we, do we need to go over the first problem? I did that yesterday. How about the second problem? Did I do that one? I don't remember. I didn't. How about this one? Do we want to find that one? I don't remember doing it. Okay. How about this one? Number three. Okay, Garrison, we're doing homework. How about three? It says a trapezoidal pyramid. So here's my formula. It's one-third the area of the base times the height. And now, in your formula sheet that I don't see any out here, but... I do see one here. May I borrow that? All of these down here, those are the capital B's. Those are the areas of the bases. All these little areas. That's what you're going to use. So the volume is 3168 equals one-third. Now, what's the shape of my base? What shape is trapezoid. it? What's the formula then for a trapezoid? Oh, uh, it's one half, one half uh, uh, and you have it on your sheet, B1 plus B2, plus B2 times the height of the trapezoid times the height of the pyramid. Now, I did this in three colors. Does that help? <laughs> That's this. Is that okay? Jesus, is that okay? Guys in the back, Emmanuel, is that okay? No, I just have to put in the numbers. You have to tell me where the problem is. Is the problem in putting in the numbers or writing down the formula? Because when you start just pushing numbers around, you get lost. You yourself get lost. If you just put these down, this is one third. I'm going to keep them color coded times one half. What are the bases on my trapezoid? DJ, what are the bases here? 28 and 20. Do you guys see that? Those. The bases of a trapezoid are the parallel sides. The non-parallel sides are just the sides. And what's the height of my trapezoid? I think I have it someplace. Oh, that's what I want to find. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to find. That's little h. What's the big green height? 36. Does it matter the order in which I multiply or divide? No. no. So this, I'm, I'm looking at this. This is 6, right? 1, 6. Total, right? That's six. Does six go into 36? Yes. Six. Cross those out. That's one. So now I'm trying to make it an easier problem. 3168 equals, well, I could do 28 and 20 because that's 48. Some of you did it this way. Times H times six. What are you going to divide by? Because I don't have a calculator handy. Divide it by six times 48, whatever that is. And then you just use a calculator for the rest of it. Now, that's not to say that you're going to get it right. I don't know what the answer is, but you can, the answers are online. You press 3168 divided by 6 divided by 48. If you want to do divided by 6 times 48, you must have parentheses. How about number 4? Do you have questions on 4? Okay, let's do 4. Um, it says... I have a container that is sitting on its smallest face. What are the dimensions then of the smallest face? This is 6, and this is 12, and this height is 15. But I don't want that. I want the water. The water is 5 centimeters from the top. So how big is this length? How big is that height of the water? That's 10. Okay, so what's the volume of my water? Okay, TJ, the volume of the water is base times height times the height of the prism. So it's 6 times 12 times 10. That's 720. No, I haven't memorized it. I just multiplied it. 6 times 12 is 72. 72 times 10 is 720. If you need to use a calculator, that's fine. This next one is sitting on 
the largest face. So what are the dimensions for this face right here? What's this? If that's the largest one, that's going to be how big? 15. And this side has to be 12 because the largest one. And the problem with this is they're not asking for this height, although you have to find that height to find the answer. This is only 6. So the volume here is equal to 12 times 15 times h. And now I'm going to probably need a calculator. The amount of water I'm going to put in here is the amount of water I'm taking out of the other one. So 720 equals 12 times 15 times h, and I'll divide by 12 times 15. Somebody want to tell me what h is? This is number 4. You can't do 5. It's 8? Can't be 8. It can't be 8. That's 6. I don't know. We have to divide it. Take a You have one of my calculators. Take 720 divided by 12. Four, isn't it? No, I just did that in my head. How did I do that in my head? It's not magic. <laughs> 12 goes into 72 six times. So that's 60. 15 divided, 60 divided by 15 is 4. So here's what this is. The question is, what's this height? So what's this length right there? If the whole height is 6 and you fill it up to 4, it's 2. That's what the problem with that one was. It wasn't that it was that difficult. It was many steps. Can't do 5. But I think the waterbed problem is an interesting problem. So let's do that. I don't have a picture for it. Now, I don't believe they let waterbeds be in apartments because of the weight. Okay, somebody want to help me out with the dimensions here for my waterbed? I don't remember. Oh, he's got it. And that's not right. 5.5. .5. Yeah, but it, see, that's 8 inches. These are feet. Okay, you have a problem like this on your practice test, and I believe it's on, like, on the real test, too. It's similar to this, the Mr. Adney problem. It's a volume problem. This is a volume problem. And the waterways, this is only 8 inches. It's 63 pounds per cubic foot. Water is very heavy. Okay, Sydney, I have 8 inches out of 12 inches times 1 foot. So that's 2 thirds of a foot. So the volume is length, width, height, because that's what we learned it in elementary school. I also use it because that's what it is. It's 5.5, 6.5 times 2 thirds. I don't remember that answer. 690? No. No, this is 30. This is 5.5 times 6.5 times 2 divided by 3. I don't know why this buzzes sometimes. So what's your cost? Your cost is the volume, whatever that number is. It looks like it's about 30 because it gave me 5.5 feet. Cubic feet. 8 out of 12 is 2 thirds. That's right. And then you didn't divide by 12. It can't be, can't be that big. Let's think about this. This is like 5 and this is like 6. Best it could be is 30. Can't be 300. Order of magnitude. And then I'm going to multiply by 63 pounds. And if you guys have been in a science class, you know the dimensional analysis. There it goes. And it turns out it's about 1,500 pounds. I think it's 1,501. Now, how big is that? How heavy is that? Hey, you guys. How big is a ton? 2,000 pounds. So it's less than a ton. Now, I had horses. I've had horses. And I had a pony and I had two horses. My big horse was probably 1,200 pounds. 
So this is a big horse, and although the Clydesdales that are down and they pull the Budweiser wagons, have you ever seen a Clydesdale? Go to the state fair and see the Clydesdale horses. They're huge. They got to be over a ton, I have to think. Their hooves are like this big, where my horse hoof was like that big. Either way, they can do a lot of damage. <laughs> but anyway, that's like having a horse. That's heavy. So that's the problem with water beds. Paul, don't throw, please. Somebody was removed in my last class for throwing, okay? So that's it on the homework. Don't do five. You have to know the apothems or know that they're not, they are related, but they're not related the way you maybe would like to see them related. We, we haven't done it, so we're not going to do that problem. And maybe there's some questions already, or I just let you work in the packet. The answers are all worked out, not just answers online. And now if you need to come back to this video, you can.